This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. With the election, the re-election, of Georgia Senator Reverend Raphael Warnock, the first African-American Democrat elected to the Senate from the former Confederacy, and with voting rights on the chopping block at the Supreme Court in Moore v. Harper, a case that could upend democracy. We look now at a new documentary that examines how we got here. This is the trailer for Lowndes County and the Road to Black Power. If you want to go back and understand why we're having these conversations about reparations, why the racial wealth gap exists, you can do no better than looking back at Lowndes County. Lowndes County was one of the poorest counties in the country. It was 80 percent African-American, and in 1965, there were no black people registered to vote in Lowndes County, Alabama. It was a dangerous time. People were followed. People could lose their jobs. A lot of black people came up missing. That's why it's called Blood Lounge. It is called that because of the absolute unrelenting violence if you're trying to register to vote. They were literally putting their lives on the line. And they still organize, and still they try and vote. We wanted a movement that would survive the loss of our lives. The strength will come from the work together. We weren't just interested in the vote. We were interested in changing who ran the county. In Alabama, you could have an independent party. This was a real effort to have black people participate in government. The white establishment saw it as a fundamental threat. We saw it as a fundamental necessity. This is a play for power. We live in a world that is so heavily shaped by that movement. We have to continue to tell the story of how we got to where we are today. That's the trailer for the new documentary Lowndes County and the Road to Black Power, directed by Sam Pollard and Gita Gandavir. Their film sheds light on the rarely told history of a grassroots movement in Alabama during the Civil Rights Movement that would become, in some ways, the first iteration of the Black Panther Party. In this clip from the film, Professor Hassan Jeffries describes the first time John Hewlett and a group of fellow Lowndes County organizers attempt to register to vote. Lowndes County was 80 percent black. But due to sustained campaigns of voter obstruction and white supremacist violence, had zero black voters registered at the time. March 1, 1965, John Hewlett, his wife, a group of 39 others that he had been talking to decide that we're going to go down to the county courthouse and see if we can't get registered to vote. He goes right into the registrar's office, Carl Golson, you know, big old former football player, car dealer. You know, he's one of the county registrars. And, and he sees Hewlett and he's the other black man barge in. Don't you know how to knock? And he was like, I, I didn't come here to knock. I came here to register to vote. I mean, that's throwing down the gauntlet. You know, Golson can't do anything but throw him out. He also says, if y'all are serious, y'all want to register, y'all want to do this, then leave all your names. We want to know who's showing up. Which of y'all have the gall to challenge white power? They were literally putting their lives on the line. Every single one of those folks who showed up, they put their names on a sheet of paper, and they brought it back, and they gave it to Gulf and said, this is who we are. And then two weeks later, a slightly larger group show up again, saying, look, we're back, right? You have our names. You sent people to visit us. We lost some loans. We lost some business, but we're back. And then after that second meeting, they realized, if we're going to do this, then we need to be organized. And so in late March, they formed the Lowndes County Christian Movement for Human Rights. In a minute, we'll speak with the directors and one of the people featured in Lowndes County and the Road to Black Power. Sam Pollard is a veteran feature film and television director whose work includes the groundbreaking Eyes on the Prize and Slavery by Another Name. 
Sam Pollard has edited over half a dozen Spike Lee films, including Four Little Girls and When the Levees Broke. We also spoke with co-director Gita Gandabird, an award-winning director, producer and editor. And in Jackson, Mississippi, we were joined by one of the people featured in the new film, Reverend Wendell Paris, former field secretary for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. After the Lowndes movement in Alabama, he founded the Southern Cooperative Development Group and is now with New Hope Baptist Church in Jackson, Mississippi. First, one more clip from the film. It shows how SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, first began working with the Lowndes County movement. There was no place for the SNCC organizers to gather, forcing them to make dangerous drives in and out of town, risking arrest or attacks by white supremacist vigilantes. In this clip, John Jackson describes how his father, Matthew Jackson, turned a small house on their property into a home base for the Lowndes County Freedom Movement and sanctuary for the SNCC workers, known as the Freedom House. Cortland Cox, a SNCC worker, and Professor Hassan Kwame Jeffries then describe how, despite the modest facilities, continued organizing in Lowndes County would not have been possible without the Freedom House. When SNCC first comes into the county, they're not staying in Lowndes County, Alabama. They're going back to Selma, where SNCC's regional headquarters was, and they're spending the night there, and then they're getting up early and coming back into the county. And that's dangerous. It's dangerous to be on the highway. So my daddy got an empty house. Y'all come down there and take a look at it. They came down, and my father and soaking them hit right off. First thing he said to him, there's no restroom in the house that's sub condition, but you're all welcome to stay here and you don't have to run back to sell, but he's not gonna come here and mess with you. His land was clear. He didn't owe any money in financing his crops. There was no indoor plumbing. There was no water. There was a pump in the back. They had a roof that leaked, and they had one butane gas heater in the house. So when it got cold, you had to go into one room. But it was very, very important to us because it allowed us to be in the county. And this becomes their freedom house. Uh, this becomes the base of operations for SNCC activists for the next year and a half. They protected us and kept us alive, and all the neighbors, people around, had guns, and they would protect us, and they gave us guns to protect ourselves. Since the federal government is not going to protect us, since the state government is not going to protect us, and since the local government is not going to protect us, then we have the right and the responsibility to protect ourselves. Again, yeah. uh, that's uh, Lowndes County and the road to black power. That last voice, Reverend Wendell Paris, former field secretary for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Uh, after the Lowndes movement in Alabama, he founded the Southern Cooperative Development Group and is now pastor at New Hope Baptist Church in Jackson, Mississippi. But, um, Wendell, go back to then, uh, what you were just describing, and talk about what was happening and the kind of danger you faced um, as a SNCC organizer, and the movement you found already in Lowndes that was not getting the kind of attention that other places were around it, from Selma to Montgomery. Well, it's important to know that uh, Lowndes County is a part of what's called the Alabama Black Belt, and it's a black belt that stretches from the Sumter County, uh, the westernmost county, all the way across to uh, Barber County, the hometown of George Wallace on the Georgia line. It's an area where the, you have this concentration of, of black people. The black belt is named because of the fertile black soil. So black people were brought to the area to uh, pick the cotton. So Lowndes County, bloody Lowndes, as it was known, one of those areas where you had families such as the Jackson family and whole communities that had begun to stand up and recognize that uh, in, the, in these communities where there basically were all type of vigilantism and led largely by the, the political office holders, the sheriffs, the, the chief of police, and, well, all of the uh, 
uh, law enforcement officials, as well as those other uh, collect, uh, elected political positions, such as the, the probate judge, which not only runs the elections, but also hounds matters of chancery in the state of Alabama, then you would, you, if you're talking about a land grab and you're talking about dispossessing people, then your movement needed to reach not only those uh, officers of the uh, 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 law enforcement officers, but you needed to also make sure that you could get your people uh, elected to vote, uh, excuse me, elected to office and then to vote uh, and become a part of uh, the whole Apparatus. In fact, if you have the, the numbers and you have the local organized people, then you ought to take control. You, you, we believe in majority rule in this country. So if you're 80 percent of the population, then you ought to rule. So that's kind of the, the that helps to form the thinking that went into the establishment of what took place in Lyons County. Understand, there are those communities where people uh, recognized that they needed to band together to defend themselves. And as, uh, as uh, Mr. Jackson's daughter so well put it, Mrs. Henson, um, my daddy said to us, these folks are coming in here, trying to help us get ready to vote. We're going to let them stay in our house. And we can do that because I don't owe them anything. And when you have that level of independence coming from small farmers, and that's what largely what you had in Lyons County was, was smaller farmers, 40 acres or more or less. But it brings with it, that land brings with it a level of independence that you don't know otherwise. So that's kind of the backdrop for me, uh, being a resident of the Alabama Black Belt basically all of my life. Get a gun to beard. Um, one of the things you do in this film is feature women's voices. I'm looking at a, the Washington Post from years ago, and the first line is, by all rights, Ruby Sales should have been killed on Friday, August 20th, 1965. Can you set up this clip um, in Lowndes County and the road to black power of Ruby? So, Stokely Carmichael, you know, later known as Kwame Ture, uh, had a complete disregard for white authority um, and an irreverence that I think really inspired her. And at 17, uh, which is, you know, incredibly young and incredibly brave, she went down to Lowndes County and was arrested shortly after she arrived there. And she and um, a fellow uh, a fellow activist, Jonathan Daniels, who was white and had come also come down, had come down from the North to support the movement, along with a few other folks, were walking. Uh, they had been released from, you know, they were held in, in the local jail for a few days and then were subsequently released without notice, without warning. Suddenly, they were told to leave or, you know, or they were threatened. It was basically a get out of here, or, you know, we're going to—or I'll blow your brains out by, you know, and by local law enforcement. So they left and walked down the road to um, a, a, a small store that where they were thirsty, it was very hot, and they went— they tried to enter the store to get um, some soda. And uh, Tom Coleman, who was the sheriff at the time, uh, he, he basically threw open the door and with a shotgun and uh, and shot at Ruby Daniels, who was standing, who was the first one to try to enter the store. And I'm sorry, shot at Ruby Sales, who was the first one to open the store and the door to the store. And Jonathan Daniels, um, as Ruby recounts, grabbed her and pulled her down and out of the way and took the shot and subsequently was killed. And um, another uh, another white, um, a white, another white, I believe, pastor was also injured in the shooting. And so uh, it was a murder. Jonathan Daniels was, was literally murdered. It, and it's—this is, again, another one of the, the stories we don't hear much about. I mean, we have heard about the murders of other civil rights workers, particularly civil rights workers, during 
the freedom struggle, but this one, not so much. And I think that, again, it's sort of a purposeful—it's um, it's purposeful in that the story of Lowndes County, again, perhaps a, you know, a story that is more threatening or dangerous to the powers that be because of the type of organizing that it involved. Um, it seems like it has been deliberately left out of, uh, out of the, our, the narrative of history. As we continue to look at this remarkable new documentary about the local movement for voting rights during the civil rights movement that's rarely included in history books, it's called Lowndes County and the Road to Black Power directed by Gita Gandabir and Sam Pollard. We spoke to them on Friday, along with the Reverend Wendell Paris, former SNCC field secretary. In this clip, we meet Ruby Seals, uh, Ruby Sales, organizer with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC, in Lowndes County, Alabama. And the first day that I was in the county registering voters, and the sheriff put a gun to Stokely Carmichael's head and said, nigger, tonight you'll be in hell. Stokely said, and tonight hell will be integrated. That was it for me. I was in. But I come from this very sheltered environment, and suddenly I'm face to face with all the heinous crimes of white America. It was nothing to be riding down Highway 80 and suddenly a pickup truck of white men pull from the side of the road and start chasing us with their guns hanging out the window. And Stokely Carmichael would have to drive 90 miles an hour to make sure that they wouldn't kill us. I mean, fear is just going to immobilize you. You're dead already. So there's no fear here. I'd have to learn to drive effectively so that when they chase me, I'll be able to dodge them and they would have run into a truck or run into a ditch or leave them in the smoke. There was no fear here. It was just clever response, survival instincts at its best. <laughs> Reverend Wendell Paris, you know Ruby Sales. Um, how this shaped the movement from there on in? Yeah, well, yes, I knew Ruby Sales was what hadn't been mentioned here, that she was a student at Tuskegee, where I also was a student at, it, at that time. And our organization, the Tuskegee Institute Advancement League, which was the student organization aligned with the uh, SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, we had all gone into Montgomery and into Wells. We had eight fellow students arrested in Selma. And after that, then the student body decided that we would go into Montgomery to protest what was happening in Selma and also to protest the actions of Governor George Wallace, who had actually called for the killing of Jimmy Lee Jackson in Perry County, Alabama, Marion, Alabama, which was where the Selma to Montgomery March really started. It didn't start in Selma. It started in Marion, Alabama. And why were they marching in Marion? Because even with a federal court order, even with a federal court order, the border registrars in, in uh, Perry County said, we are not going to allow you to register to vote. So the problem that we see in Lyons County wasn't just uh, uh, suffered by Lyons County alone, because again, the, all of the state of Alabama, George Wallace called for the killing of civil rights workers. The New York Times reported that he called for, uh, uh, in 63, what turned out to be the killings of the four young girls in Birmingham. George Wallace did that. George Wallace called for the killing of somebody in Perry County. And, they, and the state troopers ended up killing Jimmy Lee Jackson. So that's what we had. We had to come to the point of recognizing that uh, as students, you needed to, to move forward and do something. So Ruby, as well as myself, Jennifer Lawson, who you feature there, and well, Bob Mance, uh, I guess he had just left the, being a student at, uh, in Morehouse, at Morehouse. But all of those folks gathered there in Lowndes County as a result of uh, what had taken place here, uh, historically in the state of Alabama, and certainly on the heels of the Selma to Montgomery March. So we knew, knew Ruby from that respect. She's a 
energetic student uh, at Tuskegee that joined the movement and has remained involved. Reverend uh, Wendell Paris, uh, you are wearing a shirt, as you were in the film, that says Black Voters Matter, which takes us to today, as we right. look at the kind of organizing and the uh, dangers faced in the 1960s, yet still people organized, um, to what we're seeing today out of the 2022 midterm elections, the first black Democrat to represent the former Confederacy in the Senate, uh, Reverend Raphael Warnock, has just been reelected. The significance and what gives you hope today? Say, well, what we see is a continuation of the struggle. You know, a lot of people say, well, the civil rights movement has ended, and that is in error. The civil rights movement has not ended. Uh, there, are, there are other segments of the of the movement that have have come to the forefront, but we have recognized that. Um, you know, well, one song that we sang in, in SNCC and in the movement was, Freedom is a Constant Struggle, or uh, the struggle continues. Uh, Mrs. Ella Baker taught us that uh, we must continue to organize and we, and until we have uh, a full citizenship status in this country. What you need to understand is that the 1965 Voting Rights Act, as, as, as important as it is and was, it's a temporary measure. It is a temporary bill. We still do not have full voting rights in this country. So there's still work for us to do. And Julian Bond, who also worked in, 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 in Lowndes County and was a student at Morehouse and was one of the first to go into the Georgia legislature in 1965, December of 1965, all of those folks who were engaged in our movement, recognized that we weren't just in for a two or three year lifetime, um, it's two or three years of struggle, but we're there for a lifetime. So the lifetime struggle for full rights as not only citizens, but as full human beings is still before us. We, we worked with folks in Southwest Georgia who are also a part of SNCC in 20 counties of Southwest Georgia for the uh, election there in, uh, in, uh, in, in 2021 to get both Mr. Oscar and uh, uh, Reverend Warnock elected. We moved uh, uh, the needle from uh, about 20 counties where we had a 10, we moved from a 10% to a 22% increase in the election runoff is what it got them elected. If you can have those kind of movement in a runoff election, then you know that uh, a lot of work that has been done and is still being done on the ground. So you have to have and you have to maintain uh, uh, a movement base at the local level, and you build on that base. The reason Lyons County was so important was because you built local people, you built indigenous uh, people to take the leadership role. Yeah, you always need leadership, but who's going to provide that leadership? So Lyons County is a perfect example of a local people organizing and continuing to, to not organize and sustain the movement. And that's what we see being so successful in uh, in Georgia. We're going to we're going to end with the two directors, Sam Pollard. I wanted to ask you that question again about the significance of embracing the term black power, which is uh, part of the title of this film, Lowndes County and the Road to Black Power. The Black Panthers as the symbol for Lowndes County, which the Black Panthers adopted the organization. Well, I think one of the things that's important to say is this, uh, and I'm going to really just piggyback off Wendell, what Wendell just said. You know, the struggle continues, and the notion of black power that Stokely so elegantly talked about in Mississippi is about the idea that it's about political empowerment, economic empowerment. You know, and that's what Stokely was talking about. That's what this should always be about in terms of black power. And as, as people are, you know, people were terrorized when they heard that term from Stokely back in the 60s. But they shouldn't be, because it's really for black people to empower themselves economically and politically. And the other thing to remember, too, is, as Wendell said, the struggle continues. Even though it's fantastic that Raphael Warnock is now the senator, one of the senators from Atlanta, from Georgia, that doesn't mean that you, you have to 
stop. You know, I mean, we know that there's always people out there who are going to try to stop us from voting, stop us from being empowered in our communities. And, the, and we have to continue to fight and continue the, to continue the struggle. And Gita Gandhabir, um, if you can address this issue of the symbol of Lowndes County, um, not only the image, uh, but what that also means for today and what you learned in making this film. Sure. I think, you know, what's so interesting for me is uh, um, Sam mentioned that I didn't want to make this film alone earlier, and I just wanted to give some context to that. To me, representation is incredibly important on a team, and um, I wanted to make sure that there was a director or co-director at the helm of this with me who had the lived experience of this time period, who was of the community. And and, um, and also could, you know, could had deep ties to the South. And I think there is so the we again in the nar the narrative of the civil rights movement um, has been, I think, shaped by again the powers that be. We, you know, the foundation of our country is. Um, is ultimately uh, white supremacist, Christian, uh, patriarchal. And I think those are things that we have to consistently work to dismantle. And in this film, we saw a movement that, that essentially, again, a leaderless movement that did that work. And it is, it's really this, there's a model here in this film that any community can follow when it comes to seeking, again, power. And in order to build a true democracy, we know that, as Ruby Sales so eloquently puts it, that black power can, and, uh, and white supremacy cannot coexist in a true democracy. So we, we, I think it's the onus is on all of us to to work towards that within our communities. And again, um, what happened in Lowndes County is, doesn't have to be specific to a community in the South, such as Lowndes County. Again, this is a model for organizing everywhere, and I think that's what I really took away from it. Um, the you know again the the bravery that the people of Lowndes County uh, showed and continue to show. Today, right, Lowndes County remains one of ha, remains one of the counties in the country that has the highest voter turnout, and that to me mm -hmm. is phenomenal. I mean, the the, the goal too, as uh, as Mr. Paris and so many others have said, the idea is to build a movement that survives the loss of our lives in our own communities. So I think that also is a really important point that Ge I took away from that. That's Gita Gandhabir award-winning director, producer, and editor, co-director of Lowndes County and The Road to Black Power with Sam Pollard. Gita recently directed the HBO series Black and Missing and won a 2022 NAACP Award for Best Directing and an Independent Spirit Award for Best Documentary. She's worked with filmmakers Merchant Ivory, The Coen Brothers, and Robert Altman. Sam Pollard is a veteran feature film and television director whose work includes the groundbreaking Eyes on the Prize and Slavery by Another Name. Sam has edited over half a dozen Spike Lee films, including Four Little Girls, about the bombing of the Birmingham church, and When the Levees Broke. We spoke to them on Friday, along with the Reverend Wendell Paris, former field secretary for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. After the Lowndes Movement in Alabama, he founded the Southern Cooperative Development Group and is now at the New Hope Baptist Church in Jackson, Mississippi, where we spoke to him. Lowndes County and the Road to Black Power is now playing in theaters and streaming online at Apple TV and Amazon Prime. We end with the words of Senator Raphael Warnock at his victory speech for after his reelection last week. There are those who would look at the outcome of this race and say that there's no voter suppression in Georgia. Let me be clear. Just because people endured long lines that wrapped around buildings some blocks long, just because they endured the rain and the cold and all kinds of tricks in order to vote, 
doesn't mean that voter suppression does not exist. It simply means that you, the people, have decided that your voices will not be silenced.